So I really haven't been filming much, mainly just troubleshooting, and that's kind of boring and it's hard to film, so I haven't bothered. But today I want to recap. So when I finished the wiring, the first thing I noticed, turn the key on, the fuel pump runs constantly. It shouldn't do that. It should, I assume, turn on for like a few seconds and shut back off or not turn on at all until you start to crank the engine. I don't really know why it's doing that, but anyway, I decided to just move on. So we pulled all the spark plugs out so it wouldn't have any compression until we get oil pressure in it. And to get oil pressure, we actually had to dump oil down in here from my external filter and crank the engine backwards so it would suck the oil into the oil pump. So we put the spark plugs back in it and also pulled the serpentine belt off just so any of these accessories wouldn't try to crank because I don't have any power steering fluid in here and I don't have any oil in this air conditioner. So we cranked it, uh, didn't even try to start, but at some point we started getting the five volt reference that we weren't getting before. I don't know why, we couldn't figure out why, but it all of a sudden we got five volts, but it still wouldn't start. I had Hatchling Dave over here helping me. He was underneath the truck screwing around with some stuff and we finally got to start for like one second it would shut back off but it would only do that when he was under the truck at the crank sensor and he was like manually grounding the crank sensor but then i ran down to the shop to print some stuff out for us i ain't trying to point no fingers but i was not here when it happened the check engine light wouldn't even turn on anymore so i don't know we figured the computer probably got fried throughout all the troubleshooting so i got a new computer from a junkyard new to me for 85 bucks shipped, pretty good deal. There was another wire that came loose in here from the crash that this was in before, you know? So I fixed that. And also I started to look at the fuel pump wiring and I determined that to make the fuel pump really work like as if it was in the Tundra, I'd have to jump these and run a Tundra fuel pump relay and circuit opening relay. So I rigged up this, I shouldn't say I rigged it up. It's actually pretty sweet, it lays right in here. So this just pins in where the relays would have went for the Tacoma, but these are the Tundra relays wired just like they would have been in the Tundra. So I did that, but the fuel pump still runs constantly. And now my dog's pissed. Come on, dog. What you doing? What? You're the one that wanted to come out here. I told you it was gonna be cold. No. You wanted to come out, now deal with it. Too bad. All right, back to reality. So last night I just got the ECU, came out here, plugged it in, tried to start it. Starts up for one second, shuts off. I did register the key, so I don't think it's an immobilizer issue. The little light here flashes. So if I stick the key in there and turn the truck on, it stops flashing. So I think that means it's good. Now I can hear the fuel pump running. Check engine lights on. You fucking prick. All right, let me get this battery hooked up better. I also left the key on last night like an idiot. So let me try this again. Fucking dickhead. I'm trying to think where I have another battery. Hold on. All right, I got the big charger hooked up now with the crank assist. Yeah, it also sounds like something going on in the transmission. I fucking hope it's just like maybe in between four wheel drive and two wheel drive or something, you know? All right, I know what you're thinking. Give it some gas pedal, Mike. Go on. Okay, gas pedal. All right, gonna go into diagnostics. Toyota. Okay. Now, I'm gonna do automatic selection, which I was doing with the old computer, and it would read it. So, hit read, and it should tell me the VIN number of the truck that this computer came out of. Okay, this worked with the original computer that I had, so I don't know why I won't do it now. I'm pretty sure there's something wrong with this ECU, and I think I'm gonna need another one. Oh, you know what? I don't have the key on. Well, fuck you, Mike. Jesus Christ. Okay. All right, the fucking key wasn't on, you guys. Okay, starting over. Fucking shit. I'm a fucking retard sometimes. Sorry, Libs. Okay, Toyota. Automatic selection. Read. 
You know, why wouldn't it have said, oh, didn't establish communication? No, it just says, cannot read then. Well, anyway, it's probably going to still tell me that. Key is on this time. Fuel pump is running, even though it shouldn't be. It's taken a long time to read, you guys. Okay, been reading failed. And now we'll do manual selection. Now, do we have some vehicle communications? I hope so. If not, I'm going to be pissed. Dude, this is taking too long. Oh, so here's our Toyota options. Gotta go all the way, almost to the end. To find Tundra, North America. Ah, oh, fuck. I'm pretty sure it's USK 2007. Yes. So now it should be pretty much set up like as if it read the VIN. It's gonna know that it's a 2007 Tundra with a 3 URFE, etc., etc. We're gonna go up here to diagnosis and do an auto scan. So this is where it gets weird. See, it just goes through these real fast. So it tells me immobilizer passes with no fault. And that's it. Usually there's a whole list of things here and it'll say if there's faults or not. Never seen this before on anything. Security indicator, test causes the indicator light to blink. I don't need to see any data. Okay, just show me all of it, whatever. God damn it, now we gotta wait again. Okay, so we can turn that light on or off now. On. That's just to show that the light works. Obviously this thing's connected and working and it starts the truck for one second like the other ECU did. So why is it not reading any codes or anything? It's not even showing it on a list. This is why filming troubleshooting sucks. So I'm gonna shut the camera off and deal with this for a while. Maybe I got a blown fuse or something. All right, well, the first place I looked was the underhood fuse box and I just went through all of these and I know we've done this before on this channel, not that you guys watch all my videos. I got it set, so motherfucker. Okay, um, all right, hopefully I'm filming pretty good. I can't tell. Set this little guy onto the sound position. So, whoops. So when you touch these together, it beeps. Okay, check all these fuses like this. Last night, I was looking at this and I pulled this EFI fuse. I thought it looked fine, so I put it back in. But now, you motherfucker. Now it's connecting. I just pulled the fucking thing out and it wasn't. I was so amped. How the fuck could a fuse have a loose connection? I mean, it doesn't look blown, but you fucking cocksucker. All right, look, I'm taking this fuse out and putting a different one in. Fucking shit. I really thought that was going to be the fucking... See, this is why it sucks to film troubleshooting. You fucking dickhead. Why is that 20 amp fuse so hard to get into? All the other ones are easy. I'm going to try to start it again. I sure do wonder what that noise is. Now I'm gonna try the scanner again too. Why? Okay, I'm not filming all this. All right, no difference from the scanner. So I'm gonna go in here now and just test all of these fuses. Okay, what's going on here? Come on. What the fuck? God damn it. See why this sucks? No, what the fuck? Why aren't you working now? What the fuck? Do you know what an epiphany is? <laughs> it's like when you're sitting on the toilet and you're just like thinking to yourself. You ever see like in the cartoons when the little light bulb lights up above someone's head and it goes, ding. 